Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. I was meaning to put a video out yesterday. It's been a crazy few days. I've had a lot of stock. I've had a lot of people ask me if I want to buy stock. Um, I've been working for it as, as quickly as possible. Yeah, I've got more stock lined up on Tuesday. I've got an auction lined up the week after. It's going to be a very interesting one in terms of February. Usually it's a very slow month and yeah this month it's kind of bucked the trend and i'm over the moon for that it's, it's the first month i've actually been really motivated to to go in and put a shift in i haven't been feeling like that for a long time for a long long time usually I, it's been a bit of a drag but this month i'm like i'm gonna attack it and see where i can where i can get so yeah let's kind of go through what i bought so i was offered 355 ounces of silver I sold, there was a tube of 20 American Eagles, they were sold. I had 60 of the Maples, I decided to kind of give back to the community a bit, price them slightly cheaper, but I did it two, two coins per person, cheaper price, um, probably the cheapest on the market. I don't mind doing it, it's not completely altruistic, it does help me move postage, which is good for me, because I've got, I've been sitting on 16 grand's worth of postage that I need to burn through. If I can burn through 750, 750 quid's worth of postage a month, that's nowhere near the, the peak of what I was trading at. I was doing, I used to do a thousand pound a month in postage, but my business has changed slightly, so it's okay. So yeah, I had 60 of these. I am currently work through half of them. I still need to message some people back about them. And then there was, so 60, so it's 295. 275 Brits. I end up selling some of them. I think I've got 200 odd left. Slightly over 200. 220. So I'm not letting these go cheap. I don't see much silver. I've had offers on them ranging from 24, 24, 80. I buy it in bulk and it's like, there's, there's not enough in it to share it. I'm sorry guys. If you're a bullion dealer you, and you want to come to me, just, just don't because there's, there's just not enough my end to to do anything for you. I'm not going to be giving it away so someone else can make easy money. They're, they're one of the most liquid coins you can get. So it does happen. It, I don't tend to get annoyed unless if people were like low bullet, low ball in the hell out of me, that's when I'll start fighting back. But usually it's, it's just like, can you do this? And I'm like, no, I can't. It's not worth my time. I'm sorry. Um, and then I just quote my minimum price that I'd be happy for in a in a bulk deal. They usually turn and say, well, no, I don't want to pay that. And I say, well, I get people pay more for it relatively easy. So it's not really for me. So yeah, most of these need to be sorted. I think I went through, I think I've got, I've done half, but I've still got orders to kind of put through. I had, I had six ovens come in. Uh, one of them I've sold. One of them came from a gentleman who was a police officer and then there was a batch from my supplier who he told me there was 10 he then backtracked and said oh there's only five because i owe someone sovereigns and i was like hmm, hmm not holding out on me are you hmm. <laughs> then i see family guy it's like you got my money bro and i was like you got my sovereigns you got my sovereigns <laughs> nah nothing rare about these these have been sold so they're all south africa there's like a mini date run going on so I think the person was collecting some nice coins in here. 26, I think it's 25, 26, 27, 28, and 31. Again, nothing really rare about these coins. I need to pack them up and kind of move them on. So yeah, bullion gold and silver is a bit of a treat for us because I don't actually see that much silver these days. That's okay. That just is what it is. I, I have less people sell it. And to be honest, now that I'm VAT registered, it's, well, I've been VAT registered over a year, but now I have to deal with that. It's a bit of a pain if I'm being completely honest. Like, I don't see the point of working for 50 pence an ounce. It's, I think that's a bit crazy, but each to their own, I guess. So that's them. I got in a, most of it, most of this come from one, one supplier if not all of it. Okay. 10 grand bar. Paid spot on this. 
is this worth a bit of a premium because it's old school yeah maybe but we shall see this will come in this will go out I just need to list this I, I'm pretty sure this will fly because of the style it tends to be well received yeah quite like them myself I did have a couple of one ounces I was thinking of keeping them but as per usual anyone who knows me knows I'm notoriously bad at saying yeah I'm gonna keep this and then push comes to the shove got sell it so I don't keep it I know that's on me maybe I need to be better with how I trade now the next lot I think is a bit of a treat so they're not as good as I would have hoped I did buy them I was honest with with the supplier I said look it's gonna range I wasn't too happy with the coins I don't think he was too happy with me for telling him that unfortunately I can only trade what's in front of me and these are common common date proof sovereigns so let's move this slightly a bit unorganized today you'll see it's 1980 these are common the I see these a lot now the frustrating thing and I could really understand my suppliers frustrations because they pretty much hadn't been touched but they kind of had so now some people would call these a ruined proof do I think that could be cleaned up yeah potentially is it worth cleaning up a 1980 no so this one probably going to go for a sovereign plus a bit more and that's that's a real shame it, it is a real shame because box and coa that is a handling mark you can see it there so someone's opened it up it's a real shame these are the type of types of coins i would move up the value curve usually but in terms of the 1980 1980 1981 1982 is it really worth doing i don't think so personally if someone bought this from me and then they graded it just to clean it up a little yeah fair enough I, I i can see that i can see why you would do it it is a nice coin but it's not worth it's not worth me doing it unfortunately so that's the 1980 again it's a shame but it's okay you know these things happen um there was also a 1980 set so four coin set oh let's put that some of the coins almost escaped so let's move that slightly over so this is where i haven't helped myself let's move these Let's move that and the camera's all over the place I can only apologize I'm not really filming it eight minutes in guys <laughs> please forgive me all right so yeah four coin set Now, will I send any of these to grading? Again, I'm not entirely sure. So this is the five. Can you see it by the helmet? See that line? Hmm. frustrating I think it was frustrating for both of us the supplier wanted slightly more I was just honest with him but I, it's not it's not a tactic to get the price down I just make a spread and when there's kind of issues it's kind of hard now could this be resolved hmm you know is it worth getting it graded just so it it gets cleaned up a little 
even though it's not going to get a top grade. Potentially. Like, potentially. On the quintuple, yes, potentially. I'm not going to dispute that. Is it going to add much value? Um, unless you fluke it and you get a top pop, a top grade. I don't think that's a top grade coin, personally. I really don't. That's okay. You got the double. Again, double has issues. Do I think these coins could get a 69? I've had worse coins get a 69. And that's the truth. You know, I've sent some real bad coins in and they're being cleaned up. You know, sometimes see the little line by the eye, the gracia, there's a little line there. Sometimes they're residue marks. And people mistake them for hairlines and they can be cleaned. Sometimes they're just hairlines and the coin's done for. <laughs> So if I if I had an unlimited pot of cash, I probably would send this in and I'd think about sending this in. In terms of the sovereign, I'm not really too fussed about sending the sovereign in. It is a common year. See, I call this, see how it flickers, it's got the dots. I've always called this uh, planchet warping. I don't know what other people call it. I see it on a lot of coins. I see it especially on the Britannias around the 90s. Yeah. It may be the case I sell. I sell these off. I let someone else roll the dice in terms of getting it graded if they wish to do that I won't be keeping it as a set so 1980 you'll see what I mean about it's more prevalent here you can see this is what I was referring to when I said plan ship warping if anyone knows the correct term for that that's just a, a term I use that's just a logical thing I could think of but if anyone has the correct term for that, feel free to fill me in. Again, it's not necessarily a bad coin. Is it worth sending to the graders? No, I don't feel it. I don't feel it is. If you want it in your collection and you want it graded, then fine. For me, from a business perspective, it, I'm not really that interested in sending it in. Now the quintuple potentially, the double. You know, I know they're not going to be top coins. But if I'm breaking it out, I don't have a box COA either. So maybe it's not a bad shout. But the, the devil's always in the details and you, you do need to look closely into the numbers. So for these coins, as much as, you know, it is a wonderful set. It, it's a common set, but it, it's a wonderful set. As much as it's nice, it's not really a lot I can do with it. Um, that's okay. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's slightly longer than I planned. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.